Hello everyone, I'm Emmetridge, the Ultra Historian. You guys know King Arthur, right? The legendary king of England who was trained by Merlin, ruled Camelot, and fought side by side with the Knights of the Round Table. Well, he's fake, but did you know England was almost ruled by King Arthur? And no, I'm not talking about that alleged Romano-British leader who fought against the invading Anglo-Saxons. I'm talking about this guy, Arthur Tudor. He was the eldest son and heir of Henry Tudor, King of England, and his wife, Elizabeth of York. Born in 1486 and named after the legendary king, Arthur Tudor was seen by his contemporaries as a symbolic end of the War of the Roses and the start of a Tudor Golden Age. And FYI, George R.R. R. Martin based the Song of Ice and Fire on the events of the War of the Roses, so you can probably guess how bloody that conflict was and how much was riding on the shoulders of the young Arthur. To ensure this Tudor Golden Age actually happened, Arthur got the best education a 15th century boy not born into horrible disease ridden poverty could ask for. And all things considered, Arthur turned out alright and was known as a sort of an intellectual, learning languages like Greek and Latin, among other things. Although not much of an athlete, he was a skilled archer. He was also tall and handsome and possessed an amiable and gentle personality. Plus, he got along great with his younger brother and sister, which is always a plus that sibling rivalries in a royal family could easily lead to civil war. Meanwhile, Arthur's father worked to negotiate a beneficial marriage pact with the new nation of Spain. Intended to forge an Anglo-Spanish alliance against France, talks proved fruitful and the daughter of Isabella I and Ferdinand II was sent to marry the young Prince of Wales in 1501. Although not much is known about what the young couple thought of each other, Arthur found his new bride pretty and wrote to his royal in-laws that he was happy with her, but that could have just been him being polite. Alas, we never got the chance to find out what Arthur really thought about married life. A few months after his marriage, Arthur became sick and died in 1502 at the age of 15. There was some debate about how he died. Sweating sickness was blamed, which modern historians think was the Hantavirus, but some French historians suspect that Arthur's father had a role in his son's early demise. Although there was no strong evidence that Arthur was a sickly boy, some believe that he was a weak child and his father may have thought he would not be physically fit enough to be king. Thus, he conspired to have his older, geekier son killed so his younger jock son could succeed him, living out every 80s film dad's dark fantasy. Most historians, however, reject this theory and suspect Arthur simply died from one of the many diseases burning through early 16th century England. But what about Arthur's young widow? Well, it was decided that the best thing for her and the alliance with Spain was for her to marry Arthur's younger brother. Thus, that is how Catherine of Aragon came to marry the next king of England, Henry VIII, who would eventually divorce her and split the Church of England from the Roman Catholic Church. And the rest, as they say, is history. But what if history didn't turn out that way? What if Arthur lived and became king? What would happen next? Well, one scenario is that Arthur doesn't die in 1502, and Catherine becomes pregnant and gives birth to a son. Later, Arthur becomes king after the death of his father in 1509. Taking the name Arthur II, since the legendary King Arthur was the first of that name, Arthur's reign actually does herald in the golden age that many long predicted. His wise and responsible leadership ushers in a period of prosperity for England. Arthur's administration encourages trade, especially with the newly discovered lands across the Atlantic Ocean. Writing in art flourish, and the monarchy gives generously to the Catholic Church, ensuring that England and her growing colonial empire remain loyal to Rome until the end of time. Admittedly, there were voices of dissent, but they were quickly silenced by Arthur's brother Henry, who zealously defended his beloved sibling, both on and off the battlefield, creating a partnership that cemented Tudor rule in England. Arthur's greatest challenge, however, came from abroad. The Protestant Reformation would sweep Europe, especially in France, which felt hemmed in by the Anglo-Spanish alliance and the growing power of the Habsburgs of the Holy Roman Empire. When the French kings became Calvinists, it touched off a series of religious wars that Arthur and his successors were forced to fight in. Even the British Isles didn't avoid these conflicts, especially when the Irish converted to Protestantism in an effort to break from their hated English occupiers. Nevertheless, even this was only a small cloud, briefly obscuring the rays of the rising Tudor sun. Did that sound a tad optimistic to you? Well, here's a different scenario for you to ponder. Arthur doesn't die young and becomes king after the death of his father in 1509. Taking the name Arthur II, since the legendary King Arthur was the first of that name, it proves ironic because it appears our Arthur's reign will end in tragedy too. The young king's health deteriorated as the years went by and sensing weakness, nobles across the realm rebelled, forcing Arthur to fight several costly battles to put them down. Worse, Catherine had yet to give him a son, and there was a rumor going around that his brother Henry was the real father of Arthur's daughters, which drove a rift between the two brothers. Fearful that the Tudor dynasty might end in his watch, Arthur attempts to divorce Catherine and take a new wife who could give him a son. When the Pope refuses to approve of the divorce, Arthur splits the Church of England off from Rome. Arthur takes several wives, executing those unable to give him a son. When he eventually gets the son he always wanted, named Stephen, who turns out to be as sickly as his father, Arthur himself dies. Meanwhile, Henry, who never left the Catholic Church, and instead fled to the continent when his brother sought to arrest him for treason, returns to the crusading army that seeks to overthrow his nephew, put himself on the throne, and return England to papal control, touching off the English War of Succession, a war so devastating that it would divide the British Isles for generations to come. With that scenario, I went from one extreme to another, but I had a very good reason to do that. 
The thing is, we don't know much about Arthur Tudor, since he died young and was overshadowed by his much more famous brother. Thus, anything is really possible when changing his history. He could have been a good king, he could have been a bad king, or he could be entirely mediocre. He may have kept England within the papal control, or he may have actually founded the Church of England just like his brother did. There was a wealth of possibilities here, so let me know in the comments what you think King Arthur II would have done. And if you want to read another alternate history book about this almost king, check out The Alteration by Kingsley Amos, which I will link to in the notes below. Well, that is what to say on the subject. If you like what I do, please comment, subscribe, share this video, or support me on Patreon. I'm Matt Mitrovich, The Alternate Historian. Bye!